Hello, Ben here with an update from Mysterious Space, like how many months later? I don't even know. I could have done like the tiniest amount of research before, if you can even call that research. I don't know. I could have found out before I started recording. Clearly I didn't. Don't really care. Um, although I might as well say, so what got me interested in Mysterious Space again? I don't know how many people are following me, so I don't know who's going to listen, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, my boss at work has been wanting to do some AI coding, which he thinks he will eventually apply to work, uh, which is not games, uh, but he, like like me, likes games and has been uh, making his own. Anyway, he, he wanted to practice his, you know, some AI coding uh, with my game, and I didn't even know, I'd forgotten all about Mysterious Space. He, he was like, yeah, what about that space game you made? And, I, and like, I'm just thinking, that space game. Like, that could be, that could be anything, right? I, I don't know. I, I participated in Candy Jam and made uh, a game called Candy Space, and that was the first thing that came to my mind. Um, and, I mean, I like sci-fi. I tried to make a sci-fi horror roguelike. I found that roguelikes aren't so great for sci or for horror because of the turn-based. Well, a traditional roguelike. I guess this is considered a roguelike, but, but we don't have turn-based. Anyway, so I was like, yeah, mysterious space, you mean? Yeah, you could try and do AI. So hopefully he's going to get some like cool monster AI. And and he's going like a crazy route. Like he's not going to be hard coding AI. He wants the computer to train itself and do all this crazy stuff. I don't know if it's going to work in mysterious space in the long run, but I'm happy to let him try. So I've shared the source code um and hopefully he will come up with something super awesome. Uh but timeline for that, I don't know. But uh, in the meanwhile, I have apparently become re-interested in Mysterious Space, and you have been listening to me ramble quite enough. Let me show you what I'm working on. The most interesting thing to show is the, uh, oops, where's my mouse? Here we go. Is the, uh, ice planets. I should get the mouse off there. Uh, stars. Very nice. Did you see that flicker? Oh, look at that flicker. I'm still trying to solve that flicker. Anyway, let's go. Whoa, we got snowflakes. I don't know if you can see. So, I'm still kind of working on this. They, they fade in based on the altitude. Uh, but I don't like that I can see them at this height. I need to push them down. Anyway, you got snowflakes. They're a bit easier to see when you actually get into the deep bits of the level. I think snow. I love when games have snow. One of the first games I can remember, the very first Dungeon Siege game, that's not one of the first games I can remember. One of the first games I can remember that had a beautiful snow scenery was... Uh, what did I just say? Now my brain is thinking Borderlands, and that is not correct at all. Um... Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege the first game. There was some town that you went into, and you'd spin your camera, and the snow is just spinning, and it's falling, and that impressed me so much. And I just love snow. I love snowy weather. Everyone hates it, but that's because they have to drive. Suckers, I don't drive. <laughs> um, so, and then I love the snow, and I love when people can't drive, and they just, like, walk down the roads, because everyone freaks out when it snows around here. Anyway, snow. So I've been working on a sort of particle effects system. I've done that before for games a lot, I don't know, for a long time. Um, I'm sure there are libraries out there to do it for you, but you know what? It's fun and it's easy. And look, we've got relatively beautiful snow. It would be even more beautiful collected, but that's I'm probably not going to do that. Anyway, another thing to talk about, though, on these icy planets, you may notice if you again, it's been so long, I don't know how many people are, are following these videos or what, but this is very jaggedy up and down um, pointy terrain. And you can see that more on the uh, on the on the mini map down here. Um, especially when we get out into space. So the surface is very jaggedy. What I have done, I, I used to have uh, a handful of methods in it functions. I I don't want to get too technical with programming because I'm sure even less people are interested in that part. But I kind of basically had one chunk of code that was responsible for uh, generating the planets, no matter what type of planet it was. If it was lava, if it was water, if it was ice, whatever, they all used the same methods uh, th to, to generate the planets. And there were some little variables I could throw in there, like, well, what's the maximum diameter of a little tunnel that you're carving, or something like that. Um, I have now, what I'm doing now is splitting all of those up so that every... Uh, there will be, like, some common methods, but for the specific types of planets, each type of planet will have a bunch of code just for it. Uh, that, that overrides the other functions or, or maybe extends them in various ways uh, so that they can do their own little tweaks in, in a more detailed way. And I could have done all this before, like even without refactoring is what that's called when you start doing stuff like that with the code, moving stuff around. Um, 
even without doing that, I could have started to add this variety, but it's a lot easier now, uh, the, the way that, that the code is laid out. So it's much easier for me to make a nice planet, for example, be more jaggedy, and, and things like that. And, and desert planets, I went ahead and was like, well, they should be more flat, um, and other things like that. So I can customize the planets a little more. I would like to add more biomes, like plant world types, whatever you want to call them. Um, right now... I actually have less than before. I'm not going to release with less than before. I'm going to re-implement all the all the world types, uh, but I haven't got the the forest planets in. Um, and what else? There was one other type. Oh, the barren worlds where uh, you know you, you there's no atmosphere, so you just see the stars all the time. The stars also fade out. I mean, it's hard to tell because it used to be before you could see the stars, even though there was a, you know, whatever color the sky was, you would see the stars kind of in the background. Now they fade out completely again, depending on your altitude, which is, which is the same trick that, well, the snow is doing a little differently. Anyway, uh, so little, little graphical improvements. There's also a fourth kind of rock. Ooh, a fourth rock. Here it is. There, that's a new rock. That rock right there. That's a new rock. Uh, here there is again. <laughs> um, so new rocks. That's less exciting. Um, but yeah, adding little graphical things, um, and that's not necessarily super exciting, right? I think the, the more exciting things would be gameplay things. So let me go ahead and let's find that last fuel and get out of here, and I'll get back to the, the system map. Uh, but I'll ramble about it while I'm looking for this fuel. So what I would like to do is give you a little more choice in how you navigate the galaxy, or sector, or whatever, you know, whatever, space word for map. Um, right now you go in a line, as, as you probably remember or saw on that little map, and there's a couple choices, like, well, ooh, on this, this time you have a choice between these two planets. Oh, you know, whoop de doo What I would like to do instead is make a little, a graph, let's say, uh, not, not a graph like with, with an X in, like a, like a, a, a graph, graph, a points connected by lines. I'm going to leave this planet and, and show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, get out of here. Um... So, rather than going in a line like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I would like to make, you know, maybe there's a, a, a sector uh, over here, and it links to one over here, and also to one over here, and maybe that links to this and this, and maybe they interconnect, and, and it'll just be a graph of, of a bunch of systems connected by various lines, and you can navigate your way however you want. And it's going to tell you that, you know, th this one is the one that has the, the, the source, whatever, the mysterious source that you're looking for, but how you get there is up to you. Um, and one of the reasons I want to do that is the difficulty, I will make it so that the longest path is, you know, 10 steps, 0 through 9, but you could take a shorter path, but the disadvantage of taking a shorter path is that the difficulty is going to ramp up in the same way. The, the, where the, you know, the level before the mysterious source is going to be every bit as hard no matter what path you take. So, so if you want to get there faster, you can risk that, but you're gonna now you're hitting harder things and maybe you haven't had as much time to get the goods. It's gonna be kind of a it's really what it is is a way to choose the difficulty that you want to play at. If you want a harder game, then you go through fewer systems, and if you want an easier game, then you take your time. As we all know in roguelikes, you should right explore the whole level before before you advance, or uh, in faster than light, and explore the whole sector or as much as you can uh, before you go to the next one, because you want as much good you know, as many goods as possible. Um, another thing, so that's one thing I would like to do. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is to group up the inventory here. Um, it gets really nasty. It just keeps appending to this list. And so you'll have, you know, here's a great alien artifact and a great alien artifact. It should just have great alien artifact times two, you know, a stack of them basically. Um, and also probably sorted so that all the, you know, do weapons, shields, armors, alien artifacts and just sort them that way. Uh, and probably put unidentified ones first, or maybe in their place, it doesn't matter. Anyway, something so that it's easier to find the items. Also, maybe a straight line isn't the best way, maybe a grid, I don't know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that. Um, something that, so, what got me, you know, playing again after having not played for so long, after having forgotten that the game existed. Uh, first of all, I beat the game for the first time, like, legit, without cheating. I, I, I had not beat my own game before, uh, but I was able to win. One of the reasons I was able to win is because uh, we introduce new monster types, you know, as you, as you go through these sectors. Um, new monsters get added, and then harder versions of them get added, blah, blah, blah. But then once you make it to the end and start going back, I haven't coded more monster types. So the monsters don't get any harder. You're not seeing any new monsters that are doing weird new moves. You know, we're not getting upgrade versions of old monsters. And so the game is then easy in the second half, because you're getting better equipment, but aren't having harder monsters. So I'm going to need to do harder monsters. 
Um, and then the other thing I noticed is, playing is that my inventory just got huge, and it was a mess to, to try and navigate, and, you're, and you keep going back and forth over all these items, being like, okay, here's my blaster. Is this blaster any better? I mean, this is an alien artifact, obviously not a blaster. But you just end up going back and forth over these long distances, trying to remember all the numbers to compare, and it's a nightmare. You need We, we need some sort of compare feature, like in Borderlands, the game I accidentally named earlier when I was thinking my brain is a mess. Um, so, yeah, so that's what's... That's what's in store. What's in store? Let me summarize. Uh, more cool effects, like I like the snow. I think on Lava Worlds I would like to have black smoke that's going up. It'll basically be the same. It's going to be black snow falling upwards instead of downwards. Ta-da, you've got lava, sm lava smoke, right? Um, and so so that and any other weird little, little effects I can think to add. Um, I'm going to hopefully... I, I, I don't know about the crisscrossy weird new map. I don't know if I'm going to release uh, you know the, the next version with that. that that's a little more work that's probably not that much honestly um but but new monsters i think is really important and so i'm that's probably going to be my focus once i get all the new the new code for all the old planet types and maybe some new ones uh, something else i can do the 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 engine if you want to call it that uh one of the things it supports is having water in like lakes uh like think terraria right you can have little pools of water at different altitudes None of the levels in this game have ever had that, though. But it's possible. But the level generator just never did the, the things it needed to generate them that way. Like, you know, find a little pit like this and just fill it with water. So, and part of that was, again, because of the, the simple kind of planet generation code I had. Ooh, I just got messed up. So, that's something else I'd like to do. And then you could have jungle worlds where, where there's all these lakes and trees and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and underground lakes, and, you know, we can do whatever. I would also like for ocean worlds to maybe have little islands here and there, or something, which is also not possible under the previous code. So, so anyway, I'm going to spruce up the different planet, spruce up the different planet types. I'd like them to be a little more distinct, if possible. Uh, I, I don't have as many avenues for that right now as I would like. Like, yeah, we can get these, ooh, narrow tunnel cutting through ice. Uh, but it would be cool if there were, like, different monster types, depending on the planet type you visit, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I then I have to make even more monsters, you know, so anyway, rambling, all of the things I just said, gonna work on that. Also, hopefully, we'll see uh, what my boss comes up with AI-wise, and maybe he'll have, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's, he, he's kind of the same I am, he, he's, he's busy, you know, for time, he, work takes a lot of both of our times, uh, and he's got a family, I, I, I don't, so, so that makes it easier for me, you know, not kids anyway. Um, he does, so that takes up more of his time. But but he'll also get into those moods like I do, where suddenly there's like all this progress, and he's just done an amazing amount of work. So so when or if it's possible, he'll get sidetracked entirely. But you know, I feel like it's either going to be like tomorrow. He says, "Well, I made a new enemy, and it bounces around, it does all this amazing shit," and I'll say that's amazing, and and we'll put it in the game. Or maybe it will take weeks or months, or maybe it will never happen. I'm not sure. So I can't make any promises about uh, new alien AI, but hopefully it'll be really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what he comes up with. Anyway, I will finish talking now. I have rambled, and quite quickly. Sorry about that. Uh, and a new release. When will I have a new release ready? Um, you know, that's hard to say. Uh, especially with... I mean, Christmas isn't coming up yet. Got a couple weeks. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe let's, let's, let's aim for two weeks. I'll say in, in two weeks, I will either have something already released or very close to it, 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 but then Christmas will hit, and then I, and then it will take longer. So I'll try and get something out at least uh, before two weeks. Um, and even if that's just, it's basically the same, but now there's snow and all the same planet types you knew and loved, but now with new code that you can hardly even tell the difference. You no, know, even if it's that, and it's not like an amazing release with lots of cool stuff, uh, that would be cool to, to release something, right? So so that's a bare minimum, but, but hopefully I can get into some new monster types and at the very least, I'll make more rocks. Woo! New rocks. <laughs> right? Just so, I don't know. It feels so stupid to be like, and there's a new kind of rock. <laughs> Game over. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. Um, and man, if anyone is watching this, please give me some feedback. I would love to know. I'd love to hear anything. I would love to hear that someone's playing the game. I would love to hear that someone thinks that something is awesome or something is awful. Uh, either way, it would just be great to have any kind of feedback. Um, that really it's really motivating for me. So so if if you if you're playing and you're feeling like a nice and awesome person, let me know you're playing. I would love to hear about it. Uh, but thank you again, 
and goodbye. And good night. It's really late. It's like almost 3 a.m.